This is the best Asian whiskey in the world, according to the experts at the 2023 International Wine and Spirits Competition, which I find kind of funny as this is not 100% Asian whiskey. Let's talk about what's in here and get it. Hey guys, welcome to Whiskey and Literature. I'm your host, Captain Mike, and tonight we're drinking a Japanese whiskey. Well, not really. It's not technically a Japanese whiskey. Let's talk about it. In 2021, the standards were codified. The rules put down what has to be complied with to be labeled a Japanese whiskey. One of those requirements is that the grain and indeed the water has to be from Japan. It has to be mashed, fermented, distilled, aged, and bottled by a Japanese distillery. In 2020, enter into the market Shibui. And okay, I know that when I do Scotch and Irish whiskeys, I butcher the names and I'm definitely gonna butcher all the Japanese names as well today. Please forgive me, I really don't know what I'm talking about. Enter Shibui in 2020 into the Japanese market and they had nine expressions. One of those is a 10 year pure malt whiskey. This is a blend of whiskey from the lowlands of Scotland and from the Nagata region in Japan. And due to the addition of the scotch in here, this cannot be labeled a Japanese whiskey. Instead, it's labeled a product of Japan. And I guess that's good enough for those guys at the IWSC to put it in its Asian category. Let's talk about the specs and stats of this whiskey and then get it. Again, it is a blend of unknown proportion of lowland Scottish whiskies with Japanese whiskies from the Niigata region, aged 10 years in ex bourbon and European Oloroso sherry casks, finished in rare Japanese Mizunara casks. It is, of course, 100% malted barley, bottled at 43 ABV, non chill filtered, and I paid $149.99 for this a couple days ago at Total Wine & More. It's non-allocated. There seem to be plenty of bottles on the shelf if you're interested in picking one up. All right, cheers. When I opened this bottle a couple days ago, the first thing that I noticed was a big blast of coffee on the nose. And since that moment, I've not quite had that big blast of coffee but there is definitely a thread of coffee throughout the nose and on the palate. There's definitely some smoke on the nose. And I find that when I drink and nose scotch and apparently Japanese whiskey or products from Japan that have scotch in them, it takes me a while to see or nose or taste past the smoke. I occasionally watch the Swedish Whiskey Girl. She has a YouTube channel and she drinks a lot of peated whiskeys. And she stated that when she drinks these, she doesn't even notice the peat because that's what she drinks primarily. And so she sees beyond the peat, whereas I don't drink a lot of peated, and this isn't peated at all, but doesn't seem to be. Not peated, but it is smoky. And so it does take a bit of work for me to get beyond that smoke. But there's still that thread of coffee I can see some dark chocolate. It's not sweet. It's not a sweet chocolate. It's not like a bitter chocolate. It's more like a nice, we occasionally go to the store and while we're having some wine or something, we'll get the nice, just plain dark chocolates. And that's kind of what that underlying thread reminds me of. Maybe some rich, dark fruits in there. And that's, that's pretty much the nose for me. It smells very nice. It's, it's lively, it's very present, it's not, uh, it's not light. You don't really have to hunt for the scents. Maybe if you're not a great at picking out different scents, as maybe I am, you do have to work at it, but I think it's all there. It's there for the finding and the discovery for you. I do think it's a really nice nose. Honestly, if you're not into Japanese or into scotches, like Japanese really takes their inspiration from the Scotch whiskey world, or at least they do a lot of blending with Scotch whiskey in the Japanese products, the products from Japan. 
technically if it's a Japanese whiskey, there's not gonna be any scotch in there. But they do like that type of an expression. And I don't know what the rare Japanese Mizunara cask bring to the table. I understand that these trees are not great for making barrels. They have to grow for quite a long time before they can be harvested for making barrels. They don't grow straight and they're very porous and you have to let them dry for like three years before you can use them for the barrels. So I don't understand why, or I guess I just don't know what does that bring exactly to the table? I know there's different Scotch whiskeys and definitely Japanese whiskeys that are finished in our age in the Mizunari cask. And the big players, Nika and Suntory, you know, they kind of own the market. Shibui claims to be the third largest Japanese um, whiskey producer now, but they're fighting for these barrels from these large, large companies. And I understand that these an empty, barrel of Japanese Mizunara oak goes for like $6,000 empty. That's just crazy. But anyway, nice nose. I've not had anything else that's finished in Mizunara. I don't know why they don't just, and maybe they do. Like we staved a lot of whiskeys. Think about Maker's Mark 46 and other whiskeys that are staved it seems to me a good option for the Mizunara, just stave the, you know, put, have just regular barrels and throw some staves in there. And that seems like that would be a pretty good option. And I'm sure I'm not the first person to think of that and they probably do it, who knows. Cheers again, guys. Mm. I had some of this last night and the night before, and I find it to be a really good whiskey. Is it the best Asian whiskey? It might be the best Asian whiskey that I've ever had. I mean, I have five or six bottles here at my house, nothing super awesome or crazy expensive. I thought that I, I enjoyed the Nika from the barrel, that Hibiki, uh, Japanese Harmony. It's also a product of Japan, not technically a Japanese whiskey, I think was really good. Do I tell you what, after having had this, I went back and I had some of that Hibiki and I thought it was really subpar compared to the Shibui tenure. So there you go. I feel like the mouthfeel here, it is very nice. Can I say luscious? It's uh, not quite velvety, it's very viscous. Uh, it's an initial hit of some spice for me and it's not like a rye spice or a baking spice, it's like, I guess it's oak spice is what we're having. And maybe that's some Mizunara influence. I honestly don't know, but there's just a hint of cinnamon, but just some overwhelming spice and it's just kind of warm and tingling uh, throughout my mouth. And that spicy note is balanced with just some hints of some fruits and cinnamon. And overall it is, it is a really nice, really nice palette. We have some malt in there and it just all just kind of balances some spicy and some not spicy, just a hint of sweet. Uh, I would say some dark kind of fruits in there. Now, I don't have a lot of scotches either. I currently in my house have, I think, 15 scotches, which for some people is a lot of scotches and some people's like, you only have 15? Yes, I only have 15 scotches at my house. And I think for me, my favorite are the Cabal Estates from Glen Morangi, the 15 years. And I think they are an excellent whiskeys. And I just had some just a little bit ago because I want to compare in my mind those scotches to this Japanese or this product from Japan. And I'll tell you what, I think this Shibui 10 year pure malt whiskey stands up pretty well against that Cat Ball Estate Batch 2, and I have the Batch 3. I just had some of the Batch 2. I haven't had the Batch 3 uh, tonight, but I just had some of that Batch 2, and I'm feeling like this, I'm not gonna say it surpasses that Batch 2, and I don't know what your favorite scotch is. I also have the McCallum 15. I think it's a pretty great whiskey as well. I do prefer the Glimmerangi there a bit, but I feel like this would hold its own against either of those two whiskeys. And perhaps with that addition, a bit of that oak spice 
just kind of adds a different complexity to the whiskey that the other ones don't have. Though they do have some other notes, so it depends on really what you're looking for. I mean, best Asian whiskey in the world in 2023, that's, that's pretty high honors, I guess. And I know there's a lot of different competitions these days, and a lot of guys poo-poo the different competitions, but the IWSC has been around for quite a long time, decades and decades, so uh, I don't know how it ranks compared to the other competitions. I know there's a San Francisco World Spirits one and other ones, but uh, I think the IWSC is fairly legit. It's been around long enough anyway. I also, just gonna address briefly, I know there is a, quite a bit of controversy surrounding the fake Japanese whiskey. And some guys would consider this to be a fake Japanese whiskey. And I think the point of that is that there is scotch in here. It's not 100% product of Japan. So I think for the unsophisticated buyer who goes to the store and sees this bottle on a shelf, undoubtedly will just think that's a Japanese whiskey and will be happy to buy it, not understanding that there's some scotch in there and there's some, there's some, uh, some guys just feel like, well, it's not a Japanese whiskey, so why buy it? If you want to buy a scotch, just go buy a scotch. And there's whole websites devoted to calling out the fake Japanese whiskeys. And I didn't see this one on the list, but maybe it's just because it's so new. This one definitely would make that be considered to some people a fake Japanese whiskey. So that's if that's important to you and you want to buy a whiskey that says Japanese whiskey, then just look for those words on the label. Those were put down in 2021. They take effect apparently next year in 2024. So I do have a couple whiskeys that are technically Japanese whiskeys. They adhere to those standards and some of them don't. So to me, uh, at this point, I'm, I'm aware that it's a product of Japan and not technically doesn't meet those standards. So uh, not that big of a deal to me at this time. So if it is to you, then buyer beware. Just read the label, no big deal. So now the question is, do I think you should buy this bottle? I mean, am I supposed to be recommending that? I don't really know. I had this the first night and I was like, ah, oh, I think it's pretty good, but I don't know how, and so I've had the Hibiki and I've had the Cabal Estate, and I think this stands up pretty well against those whiskeys. So, but $149, the Cabal Estate I think is 89. The Hibiki is, I think 99 maybe, it's, it's certainly less than 149. So who wants to buy this whiskey? If you're into Japanese whiskeys, you wanna have this one. It is a pretty good product from Japan. Do you need to have this in your collection? If you have a bunch of scotches, perhaps not. If you're the kind of guy who likes to have people come to your house and you like to show them your world collection, you have your Indian whiskey and your Canadian whiskey and your Japanese whiskeys and your scotches and your Irish, then you wanna have this one on your shelf to share with your friends as it is a pretty good example. So I have not played in this market quite a, a whole lot, so I don't know how excellent all the other whiskeys are, but this is a pretty good example, I think. Uh, it's got a great mouthfeel, it's got a nice finish, uh, just the right amount of spice and just a hint of sweetness and some smoke and it's all nice and balanced and it is pretty good. $149 though, you have to decide if you wanna make that choice or not. For me, I'm happy to have it on my shelf. All right guys, if you enjoyed the video, like it, it's free. Subscribe to see more of my content. I do both book and whiskey reviews. And for now, you know what to do, my friends. Turn the pages and stay thirsty. Cheers. Thank you.